And then some like loud shot sounds happened and somehow Steven became the person in front. Hello internet friends, welcome to my channel and welcome to another day of me trying to get better at vlogging. This is episode 20, finally nearing the end. And yes, it has taken this long for me to sit down and talk to you guys about what the difference is between run and gun style vlogging and cinematic vlogging and why I am trying to incorporate both styles into my own style. So with run and gun, it is more of an on the go filming style. It focuses more on a spontaneous approach that originates from documentary and guerrilla style filmmaking. Creators will quickly adjust to their changing environments, capture real life moments, reactions, and it has a very authentic feel to it. There will be quick transitions. So yes, you do have to still remember your transitions and the angles will be more about what feels natural in the moment. Whereas cinematic vlogging is very storytelling based just with visuals alone. And cinematic vlogging does focus heavily on traditional filming techniques. So I do think that you can do both and blend them pretty well, in all honesty. If you're able to get a composition and framing in a spur of the moment moment, yeah, sure, we'll go with that. Is it cinematic or is it run and gun? If you're able to tell the story well, but you didn't pre-plan it and found the story in editing, which one is it? Are you utilizing what's before you or because you're editing later, does it add that cinematic flair? I feel like there's a very fine line. Like I personally find some documentaries cinematic and technically cinema is about creating and presenting motion pictures. So that would be all of YouTube. When you hammer it down, it's all cinematic because it's all cinema, but there's animation, there's run and gun, there's storytelling, talking head, day in the life of, what I eat in a day. Uh, there's, there's a whole plethora of genres and I don't think that the rules are so strict. I think the most important thing is that you want to tell a story and you tell it in a way that you find enjoyable and others might find enjoyable as well. Really with cinematic vlogging, you're just planning the story out better. You're planning the shots, you're storyboarding possibly, you're spending hours getting the same shot in different angles over and over and over till one looks good. And not all of us can do that. So run and gun, adding to it and taking some inspiration from cinematography. I love that for me. Maybe in the long run, I can spend some time actually doing a cinematic vlog the way I would want to. But for the fact that I'm trying to push these out every other day, I don't have the skill set, the creativity or the experience to do it, but that's fine. I still love run and gun. I mean, look at Casey Neistat. He was run and gun and genius, absolutely genius, lots of fun. And then you can look at other creators where their videos are 17 minutes long. They don't talk at all, but the visuals are so intriguing that you are just hooked and you don't even realize there's no talking. So there's no right or wrong way to do it. It's about personal preference and what works for you. And today run and gun is going to work best for me. So we are headed to Seattle today. I'm going to go to a sushi buffet and then we're going to a haunted house. I'm gonna get as much footage as I can. Probably not too much of me being in the car because um, some of you guys may know, this is gonna be my least favorite part of the whole experience. It will be scarier to me than the haunted house itself, I guarantee it. And because our truck is in the shop, we have this very low to the ground itty bitty rental car and I'm just not excited about it. Something about being a bigger truck made me feel more secure. <laughs> that's, that's gone for the time being. It's two hours away on a Friday in traffic. So make that probably three. And now I'm just realizing that we're gonna be in Friday rush hour in Seattle. Whew, we are gonna pack our anxiety pills, that's for sure. Yeah. And then after everything's said and done, we, we gotta drive back. <laughs> it's, gonna, it's gonna be a little extreme for me today, but it's worth it because I really, really have not ever experienced a, a buffet specifically for sushi. And I really love a haunted house. I really love a haunted house. And my area doesn't really have any. So we must travel to one. So that's the plan. I have to go get ready. I have a dress. I'm gonna do my hair. I don't know why. I'm just going to a buffet and a haunted house. What I'm looking like right now, I may just leave it in all honesty. The dress I bought can work for a Christmas thing too. It, does, it doesn't have to be today. You know what, the more and more I think about it, this may be how I dress. It's just leggings and a sweater, but I cannot deny how comfortable I feel right now. And if I'm going to a buffet, maybe I don't wanna have to wear like Spanx some skin forming, suck it in, panty liner stuff. And maybe I want some really comfortable shoes to walk around the haunted house in. So I think maybe this is where I stay. Which you know what, that gives me a couple more hours, so yay. I also am on my period and so it's just like, oh. 
comfort is key. See, right now I'm doing talking head. <laughs> so feel free to mix it up. Whatever creativity style you want to do is what you want to do. I just like the idea of putting in effort to learn more because I personally have a feeling that I can do better, that the vlogs in my head can be reality with more practice. Whew, okay, I'm gonna take some Midol, some anti-anxiety medication, and we're gonna head off. This is gonna be really fun today, I think. It was 5.34 that we have parking until. Okay. Okay, so Steven's plan right now is to make me walk up a hill after eating copious amounts of sushi. You're welcome. Exercise. <laughs> so we're gonna walk around Good. Chinatown in Seattle. Before we get too far, the sushi ace, sushi, sushi percent ace, I don't know how you're supposed to say it, but it's a sushi percent A-Y-C-E for all you can eat, right? The slices of salmon sashimi were so thick, it tasted like butter, really great cuts. The premium, which is dinner package, was $31 per person. Yep. That is a steal for those sashimi pieces alone. On top of that, every roll I had was perfectly done. I love a spicy tuna roll, and a lot of times there's not enough spice. This had enough spice. There were so many great flavors in it. Full the, size rolls. Full size rolls. Uh, it took 15 minutes between each order, so you have to wait 15 minutes before you can order after receiving your last order. So you get 15 rolls <laughs> at one shot if you wanted to. You could get 15 rolls in one shot if you wanted to. So, I mean, I can't tell you guys how much of a steal it is. If you are in Seattle or planning a trip there, head down to Sushi Percent AYCE in Chinatown, downtown 
Seattle. I almost said Bellingham. <laughs> Uh, the only thing I would say was that the miso soup was lukewarm, but if you want it to be a probiotic, it is supposed to be served lukewarm because otherwise you kill the microbiota. Microbiota, that's incorrect. <laughs> the microorganisms. <laughs> so it is served correctly, but I like mine piping hot. Also, do you want to tell these guys what I learned while we were talking and waiting for food? and making no, chit chat. I have no idea what you learned. So I learned that I can't bring my camera in to the haunted house. There is no recording allowed. It is the most haunted location in Seattle. Uh, nine people were forced into a crematorium and the mystery is still unsolved. So that's where we'll be going tonight. And someone signed me up for a premium package or some shit like that. What'd you do? Nothing. I don't know what you're talking about. I get an extended tour. I get I get the I get the special the special this. I mean, Am I, I gonna be alone? I might not have to bring you back home, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> you're going with me though, right? Going where? What are we talking what are we talking about? You said I have an extended walk or something like that? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not gonna I'm gonna have extra. You got the you got you got the full package. I got the full package, and I don't know what that means, but I can't even show you what that will mean. <laughs> I'll have to describe it. Apparently. <laughs> All right, so let's go find a hill. Apparently, I gotta go walk up. Are we heading back to the car? Well, we got like 20 minutes. Cars over there. Okay, so yeah, let's go walk up a hill after eating 35 oh, pieces. It's good for you. And ice cream. Oh, I had way more than 35 pieces, but it was so damn good. I mean, at least most of it was sashimi. You had three rolls as well. I had 30 pieces of salmon sashimi. At That was the beginning. <laughs> Alright, we are in Japantown now. And we're going up these things. So Steven has found us a little place to hang out before we start the haunted house. We're at Diagonal Avenue, South Shoreline, Public Access, Public Access. Diagonal Avenue, South Public Shoreline Access. <laughs> One of those things. But before we go and hang out, uh, I realized I didn't do any research into the haunted house. I said I wanted a haunted house. I looked at the best one. This was in Seattle. It was the highest rated and most people said it was the most scary. So I didn't do any research. I just said that's the one I want to go to. So you and I will be finding out about this in real time together. Well, no. you'll find out later. No. You'll get a real reaction to what I'm finding out. How about that? <laughs> so this place was originally built as a mortuary and then transitioned into a funeral home, complete with crematoriums. What? Isn't a mortuary and a funeral home the same thing? No. You have Google on your phone. And then it finally ended up as a real morgue. In 1947, the body of jazz trumpeteer John Figgy Dorsey was stolen from the embalming table and later found dismembered on his widow's front yard. In 1968, two armed individuals broke into the mor- Aren't most individuals armed? <laughs> with weapons. Armed with weapons. Broke into the morgue during a staff meeting. They bound nine of the staff members present and forced them in one by one into the crematorium. There were no surviving witnesses and no suspects identified. Wait, how does that work? How did they know that was happening if there was no witnesses and no suspects? It's a mystery. How does that work? How do they know they were armed? How do they know there were two individuals? Hmm, we have a mystery afoot. No one has ever put together the motives of the perpetrators. How do they know? When did that happen? 1968. So there were no cameras. No cameras. That's what there I'm saying. Was... <laughs> I was guessing that there were no cameras. Well, in 1968, there were no cameras. Since there were no living employees left, the morgue was sold to the city of Seattle and later turned into the truly haunted house it is today. But really, how do they know? No one has ever put together the motives of the perpetrators. Well, if they don't even have any suspects, how could they come up with a motive? Hmm. Oh, there's a chainsaw chase at the exit. 
That's my least favorite haunted house trope. It feels very dangerous to have a chainsaw. Just an engine running. I don't have a chain on the chainsaw. I know there's no chain on it, but the, the blade is, it's not a blade, I get that, but the little sticky out part still moves. It, it could get stuck in my hair. It can't? It's, it's, it's a gas powered vibrator at that point. Well, now I'm not going to be scared. There's something hopping around out there. Yeah. Let's go out there, shall we? That was kind of the plan, but they're busy doing other stuff. We wanted them to know that, like, apparently people died here and some really grisly, like... Amazingly, people die everywhere. True. <laughs> oh, there's not really a good walking path. There is something hopping out of the water over there. Well, let's go walk around and see if we can't find this amazing walking path. I think that's the end of the path. It's huge! <laughs> yeah. hundred years ago, this all used to be estuary. And now we've basically forced this all up and it's just this little, little bit. <laughs> oh, wow. So that was, and that's just 1954. It was wild. And we've since built it up and made it <clears throat> what it is today. It's glory. It's muddy bay glory. Yeah. That's very hard sand. Cool. How hard is this sand? That's hard sand. Cool. Close the curtain Stay on the phone We are the monsters Holding you still We are the gallows Up on the I'm, I'm getting hyped up. We got an hour to wait, but this looks really good. This, this is gonna scare the pants off of me. I cannot wait. Like, I'll have to let you guys know how it goes. But Seattle, Georgetown Morgue. I think, I think this is gonna be just as on par as the one in Omaha, Nebraska, where I was in a tunnel and they kept shrinking the tunnel to where you had to like crawl. And then a girl in front of me stopped crawling and the people behind me were pushing. So that was the scariest haunted house I've ever been in. This might beat it, fingers crossed. First pop, I was done. Steven was smart and asked if we could go into the dark maze early since we have the VIP tickets and no line was there. We went through our first little, little introduction to it. So they warn us at first that there will be no jump scares, no one will be jumping out at us, but there will be sounds, there will be feelings. And the rest is pitch black and you're in a maze. And there was ducking involved. I didn't expect ducking to be involved. But Steven had me up out at the front. And the first time I got squirted, it was like, okay. And then some like loud shot sounds happened and somehow Steven became the person in front. I wonder how Oddly that, enough. I wonder how that happened. I love how you pushed me in the front to even start out with. That should have never I even been a given. This is your experience. 
Hey, I'm brave as long as you're in front. <laughs> <laughs> you just went so fast. That actually was almost scarier. The fact that he was just plowing through it. <laughs> I heard you go, ah, a couple times. Oh, you, oh yeah. That's <laughs> weird shit on the walls. <laughs> The there was weird shit like on the walls. Like tentacles and stuff on the walls. It's like, oh, that's different. <laughs> yeah, that first one was disorienting, and I think it was a good start. What it's called the dark maze. How much were VIP tickets? You don't want to ask that question. I can't tell you guys because I don't want to ask the question. But yeah, I'm gonna go put away my camera and my my phone and stuff, and we'll start this experience, and I'll let you guys know how it went. It's getting proper dark and scary. Are you getting excited? No. Do you think you'll be scared? Uh, jump scares will scare me, yeah. This is gonna be fun. Jump scares scare the shit out of me. If I can see it coming and you act creepy and walking up to me, it just makes me uncomfortable. So we'll see. Okay, we are out of the haunted house and we are headed back home. In 600 feet, turn left towards South Alaska Street. That took about half an hour. It was it was a lot of fun. There, there was some crawling, there was some ducking, there was a really cool swamp feature. I don't want to give too much of it away, but yep, I was very scared and Stephen became a sacrifice to all the creatures while I tried to make my getaway. The only thing I would say is that uh, they needed to space the entry a little bit better because we were on top of people and people were on top of us and the the gags, the they weren't hitting at the right time because they were already triggered. But the people, the actors in it, one in particular really scared me. You're really lost, honey. Well, it says exit, but I don't see... Take the next right towards South Alaska Street. Is that an exit? Right there. left onto South right Alaska Street. Jesus Christ, that's just insanity. Yeah, they probably should have made that orange. I should have had some freaking cones or something. Yeah. East Marginal Way South. I want to talk to you guys, but also I'm very scared at driving at night and I don't want to disturb Steven from concentration. So maybe when we get home. I think it's stopping. And there's a car behind us. that me talking to the camera now you guys is going to be okay I won't be a distraction and I kind of want to talk because I can tell that my voice the more I let it sit it's going it's it's going away I screamed a lot my voice my voice is gonna be gone tomorrow pretty much so here's my thoughts on the haunted house <laughs> it was great it was absolutely great at first I thought it was going to be a lot of like gags with some actors and there are but they lull you into a false sense of security for a hot minute and then they put out some like creatures that are fake and then they're in a corner or popping out of a wall is an actor and they are officially so creepy and I don't want to spoil anything so I won't tell you exactly what I saw but there was one actress in particular that as soon as I saw them it was game over I, I was done I wanted out <laughs> I didn't ask to get out, but I, I was legitimately scared. And I know I was legitimately scared because I cuss and I start like going, nope, 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 when I'm, when I'm like, I am scared. So Steven got flung around a lot. He had to protect me from all angles. And I tried to be in a corner as much as possible. I had a lot of fun. I don't want you guys to think that me trying to hide from everything, that was the fun part was, me being scared shitless. <laughs> I also really enjoyed when Steven couldn't find which way he needed to go and the girl goes, you're going the wrong way! It was hilarious. They said it in character and it was just, it was very funny. Okay. This car's speeding up, huh? It's because the speed limit just increased. Oh, okay. And Steven says that his favorite part was me. <laughs> so, <laughs> we both enjoyed each other in the haunted house which also adds, adds to the fun. You, you're grabbing a snack? Mm -hmm. I want red vines. Mm -hmm. I mean, I already killed.
Hilton in a diet. quarter mile. Merge onto I-5 North. I also really like that we got a little dark maze that we went through. That was fun to get us like hyped up for it. And again, like I said, the only thing I would change is that I feel like they need to stagger it out a little bit more. I don't know if they're capable of doing that with the amount of people we saw and being able to In tell- a thousand feet, turn right onto Smoky Point Boulevard. Or if they're able to tell how some people will go slower or faster, but it, there was quite a big congestion and some of some of it didn't hit because they already went off and you already knew something was gonna happen. But other than that. In a quarter mile, turn left onto Smoky Point Boulevard. I'm gonna smoke. <sighs> and then the last mention is just how much detail they put in to the scenery. It was so cool. The the swamp creature feature was definitely like the coolest haunted house feature I've ever seen. Really cool, really imaginative, and that was a lot of fun. And also the person that got congested with us behind us, the girl was hilarious because she kind of was like me and the guy she was with was kind of like Steven so we felt like kindred spirits. And sometimes she would scream at stuff that I already had passed and then she would scream and then I would scream because I was like, what? So yeah, there goes the voice. So that's gonna be it for tonight. I do wish that I could have recorded some of it, but I understand why not. But maybe in the future, if I get big enough and I'm traveling to enough places, maybe I could feature more haunted houses and maybe they would let me record if I become a big enough influencer. That would be the dream. And you guys can help me out with that if you hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share the video with your friends, and comment down below, do you have a favorite haunted house you've been to? What's the scariest thing you've ever seen? And just say hi, happy Halloween. I'll talk to you guys later, bye. Close up the curtains.